Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna start at the beginning. Well, not the beginning, more like the pre-beginning? Is that a thing? We're gonna think about how we get set up to work, not only on screen, but in our physical setup too. So why are we starting with something so basic? I mean, I'm sure you've all heard the cliche phrase, you need to learn to walk before you can run, but you're probably thinking this is more like crawling, right? And to an extent that's true, but I think it's really important that we give ourselves the right foundation. I mean, just think how long you spend in software. Think about that for a second. Long time, right? So we wanna give ourselves every opportunity to save time wherever we can. If there's a corner to cut, I'm gonna take it. So let's take a look at streamlining our physical setup at our desk. Try getting used to working with one hand on the keyboard and one on the mouse. This will give us the freedom to navigate with one hand and enter commands with the other. We can use the right mouse button by itself to orbit, shift in combination with the right mouse button to pan, control in combination with the right mouse button to zoom in and out, or we can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel depending on your preference. From this position, we also have quick access to the spacebar, which doubles as enter in Rhino and many other CAD packages. We can use it to repeat commands as well and escape to cancel any commands. So now that we got our hands in position, let's turn our attention to what's on screen. For reference, I'm using Rhino 6 for Windows. If you happen to be using an earlier version of Rhino, or you're using the version of Rhino for Mac, what you see on screen is going to look slightly different, so try and just follow along as close as you can. If you still have questions, please post about it in the comments below. By default, Rhino displays all these toolbars, but one of the first things I try and get students to do is to stop using icons and toolbars to run commands and start making use of the command line and typing in commands instead. So why use the command line? Can't I just go and click icons? I know them already. Well, you could. But the problem is, think about what happens every time you go to click an icon. I take my mouse, I move it across the screen, I click, I move it back across the screen to select some things, and then I hit enter or I do whatever, right? Those small mouse movements over time, they add up. If I can manage to use my hand to navigate and select things with my right hand and use my left hand to initiate commands, shortcut keys or whatever, I save myself a huge amount of time in the long run. So now let's take a look at how I typically like to set things up. Just a small note here, I like to actually orient my taskbar vertically on the screen instead of horizontally. And the reason for this is pretty simple. My screen is shorter top to bottom than it is left to right. It's oriented in a landscape format. So if I put my taskbar over to the left, I'm going to lose a smaller proportion of my screen horizontally than I would if I had it running horizontally and I lost pixels vertically. It may seem like a small thing, but trust me, when you're modeling for hours at a time, every pixel counts. So the first thing I like to do is, since I'm going to be using the command line and typing commands instead of using toolbars, I'll just take the toolbars away and save that screen space. To do that, I'm going to come over here and hover over the small little line that separates toolbars until I get this crosshair with arrows, click and drag to tear off, and then close that window. Same with my tab toolbar here at the top, click and drag to tear off, close that toolbar. All right, already a lot of space we just freed up. The next thing I like to take a look at is this column over here to the right. Properties, layers, display, and help. These are all the tabs that Rhino shows me by default when I first open it. Properties and layers are things I'm going to use all the time. So I should be able to see these always. In fact, I use them so often, I often want to see both at the same time. So to do that, I can grab the Layers tab, click and drag to tear off and release, and I create a new tab group. If I click and drag this tag group to the bottom right, I can dock it here below and resize this toolbar over here, roughly 50-50. Now I have my properties and my layers shown at the same time. This is really helpful uh, because these are two menus I'm gonna make use of 
every second while I'm modeling. If I need to see any of the other menus, I can right click on one of the tabs and it will show me a list of available menus. Check marks will appear uh, next to menus that are currently in the tab group I just clicked on. So layers, for instance, is activated. Note though that properties is not because it's in the tab group above. So I can add other things like name views, for instance, and they become tabs right next to the previous one. Okay. Next, I'm going to look at the options down at the bottom of my screen. I typically don't model with grid snaps. I just don't prefer it, but there are occasions when it can be useful. I like to keep ortho on by default. Most things that I happen to model make use of this quite a bit. I don't turn on planar modeling. Uh, I do make use of object snaps or O snaps, so I will activate those. And I like to use those in conjunction with smart tracking, so I'll activate that as well. I also like to make use of the gumball, so I will activate that. For my object snaps, I typically like having endpoints, midpoints, and intersections selected. Anything more than that, and snaps tend to get in the way more than they tend to help. One last menu I like to have available to me is the selection filter. So I can come down here and click filter, and I get this menu that pops up. I like to dock this up at the top right of my screen, and I'll explain a little bit about why. Because we're going to be modeling very extensively with the command line, we want to pay, leave enough room for the command line to have space to give us readout. But it's very unusual for the command line to use any more than about 50% of the width of my screen. Everything past that is basically a wasted opportunity to have another menu occupy. So I like to put my selection filter here, and the selection filter will let me toggle between things I can and cannot select. One of the most common things that students ask initially is how do I stop multiple objects from being selected when I click on something? The selection filter is one really simple way to do that, and having that available to you at all times uh, can be really helpful for that reason. So this is about it. This is generally where I like to have my Rhino window when I start modeling. This is typically the procedure that I'll go through if there's a fresh installation of Rhino and I want to set things up uh, the way that I like to have them. Also, Rhino will save your layout, provided it doesn't crash. Um, and so that when I open Rhino the next time, I should get something that looks like this with my menus, with my selection filter, with my command line, my object snaps, everything should be saved together uh, into that uh, a toolbar file that Rhino loads every time you run it. So you don't have to go through this procedure every time. Uh, it's just typically when uh, you get a new installation, you might be working on someone else's machine or there's a, an extensive update that might happen. Um, so yeah, this is the generally the steps that I go through every time uh, I need to set up a, a new installation of Rhino. And this is, I think, a great starting point for efficient modeling. Well, that about wraps it up for today's video. If you have any other time-saving tips or tricks that I didn't cover in this video, do me a favor, share them in the comments. Let's all learn from each other. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe below if you'd like to see more content like it in the future.